Hello and welcome to Sharkies as we preview round five of the Pettit Senior Hurling Championship. And with me this week are Ed Rousham and after a four year absence, Paul Roach is back on the panel. Are you happy to be back, Paul? Uh, suspension up, yeah, it's great, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to turn our attentions first of all to uh, Group A. And if we look at the standings in that table, we see that uh, St. Anne's are at the top of the table on seven points and they have a, a very big score difference of plus 29. Uh, Nevena are in second place on six points and they have a score difference of plus 18. Uh, Ferns are on five points and they have a score difference of plus 18 as well. While Glynn are in fourth place on four points. Owlert are in uh, fifth place on two points and Cross the Bag are in bottom place on no points. And of course, the way things have worked out, Ed, Owlert and Cross the Bag in this group are guaranteed to be fifth and sixth regardless of what happens this weekend. Yeah, that's true. The, um, last Sunday's match was actually an exciting game. It was very close and Cross the Bag almost won it and a late goal from Simon Roach. But um, they'll go into their last games now and you know anyone with an injury won't play probably. So you know they can have a cut at the game but they'll have their eye on the preliminary quarter final I'm sure. And if you were involved with a team that would say hadn't anything anything to play for in the last round, would you just leave anyone off that'd be totally injured, Paul, or would you be trying to win the match to get a bit of momentum or what way would you go? If you're playing the following week you nearly want to try to get a team you're gonna have out, but when you're not going to be playing for another three weeks after it, as with the likes of Owlert who have so many injuries at the minute, they're not gonna risk anyone without a doubt I say. Um across the bag, I think Mark Byrne went off the other day and he's hardly gonna be risked. I think it's in three weeks time when they'll be getting him ready. Um, and of course the current format means although they're in 5th and 6th they'd, they're still in the championship and one of these two teams could end up having an impact on oh, the Oh absolutely you know if they, if they win their next round they're in, they're in the quarter final and anything can happen after that. Just getting back to your original point, two years ago you remember Ratnor played Shell Maliers and Ratnor had nothing to play for and Ratnor played really well on the night and got bit by a point I think and I think it, it played a big part in keeping them up that year, that they had the confidence and the momentum going into the relegation final. So maybe they'll look at it that way, I don't know. And if we look, Paul, then at the, the other four teams in the group, well, we look we look game by game. So if we look, first of all, St. Anne's and Lynn. Um, St. Anne's are on seven points, they're at the top of the table at the moment, and Lynn are in fourth place. St. Anne's can obviously still finish top. Lynn can, I think, finish... <laughs> Uh, third maybe if, if they get the win here at the weekend what way would you see it going or what have you thought about the team so far I think um, St Anne's look at they're, they're well structured they're going well they're well set up um, I still think along with another couple of teams they're still only a second and third year they probably had to pick it up a little bit against Gorey but I still think they're planning timing it right same as probably Gorey but um, and Lynn at the start of the year I say the take coming forth, I think with the bodies they had at the start of the first round championship, they took fourth all day. So they have nothing to lose, everything is bonus territory for them, but I still see the ends getting over. And what are your thoughts on those two teams so far? Right? Yeah, it's a repeat of the game last year down in Tigos, a really wet night. But St Anne's were very lucky on the night to win that. It, it took a, a last minute Jonathan Fogarty goal to win it. For some reason Glenn always seemed to play well against the Anne's, yeah. you know, and Again, they're, they're in bonus territory, absolutely in bonus territory. They were in relegation final last year. They won the two matches they needed to win, and they're safe now, so they can go and have a cut at the Ants. And I think it'd be a lot closer than a lot of people think, even though the Ants appear to be a team on a mission, and they were very impressive against Gorey last Sunday night. So who, who are you going to tip to win it, Ed? I think the Ants will win it. And Paul? I go the Ants, five, seven points. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll agree. They have been close in the past, but I just think that this group is kind of nearly nearly too many leagues in it. You have the top three, St. Anne's, Nevena and Ferns, and then you have Glenn Owler and Cross Bay kind of in the in the weaker part of the, the division, I think, at the moment. So um, I think St. Anne's will win the game reasonably comfortably. Um, and the next game then is uh, Nevena and Cross Bay. We've mentioned already, Paul, that Cross Bay, they're going to be bottom of the group regardless. Uh, Nevena still have the, they'll probably want to get the win on the board to ensure that they finish in the top two if they do win they have a chance of being first yeah and, and I, this way it's more important for Gory I think as well but um, and I do think they'll win it they won't want to play someone out of third and fourth in the other group because in my opinion the other group is stronger so you're going to play in a very good team if they, if, they, if they don't come in the top two so I do think Gory cross a big I still think as I said already I think they'll be waiting for a few weeks 
and try to get it right because I think they're going well in the football too so let's just get it right in three weeks time and what, what have your thoughts been on across the bank so far in, in the championship all they haven't had any wins but like the, they've been putting up decent performances no, I suppose in uh, some games yeah they're, they're a big strong physical team and look at as we're looking at the other group all they could end up playing them and it's two clashes of neighbours and plus one big, big physical team where all gate where you look at it probably just more of a hurling team so they will be licking their lips if they get that far, you know. And Ed, your thoughts on the two sides? Yeah, look, um, Gory were impressive the other night. I think that was the match of the weekend, really. You know, I think it was a high standard. Cross the Beg started poorly against Ferns in Belfield, but since then they've put in good performances. And Oshin Foley shot the lights out last Sunday. He was very, very good. And they have good players. Hardy Foley, you can see him getting better and better. The three Devricks is now Ron and Devricks is back. But Brody Murphy is a big loss to Ballymore and forward line. But you're on about Gorey and Crossbeg. Gorey need to win this to finish second because if they don't win this, Farns will pass him out. And I don't think Gorey need a, an extra game myself. Uh, one player who I think deserves a mention is Brian Cush, cornerback. He's a new player on the team. I thought he was very good on. Lee Moog McGovern, now Lee Moog played well, but you know, he limited him very well uh, for, for a lad that was playing junior hurling last year. I thought he was very, very good. Um, so you were going to tip? I think Nevena will win it. And Paul, I think Gory yeah. as well, yeah. And I'll make it a full house. I think they have more to they just have more to play for in the match and they're, they're a stronger team. I think they'll win the game. And the third fixture in this group then is Fern St. Aidens against Owler de Balloch. And uh, again, Owler de Balloch are going to, they have two points, um, they're going to be fifth regardless. Ferns have five points. They can be, um, they can end up in the top two. I'm not 100 percent sure. They can end up in first place, but it it'd take everything to go perfectly for them as well. Ed, what are your thoughts on both sides? Yeah, look, we spoke earlier about the players that Owlert will be missing. I I think Sean Murphy is injured and Billy Don. Billy Don scored two ten last Kevin Nimmo, so. Kevin Nimmo, Kevin Nimmo so. is another big player for Owlert that, that's injured. So you know. Ferns are starting to use their players now. Benny is back, James Tonks is back. Owen Murphy made an impact there the last day. So I think Ferns uh, have players in the subs now that are reaching to get on the team. So I, I think Ferns will win this game. And uh, Paul? Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm very impressed with Ferns so far. Well structured, I thought Ferns going into it might start to struggle this year without Owen Murphy there but he's back now but without but they're still well organised very efficient with the ball and look Paul Morris is still a massive key for him and everything sort of goes through him um, and as you see Rory Scallon I think it was got yeah, five points the other day yeah. I said he's probably adding more of an attacking thing to his game which is another plus for them but the way Ferns use the ball at the minute and how structured they are I can only see Ferns beating out at the weekend unfortunately um, Special mention for Simon Roach for such a young player, you know, two one from play, and he was closely marked. I think he's definitely one for the future. Mm. So uh, two votes for Ferns, and I'm going to make it a third. So uh, I suppose it wouldn't have taken experts really to predict um, or to to go with Ferns, St. Anne's, and Navena to win the games, but it'd be interesting to see if that does materialise at the weekend.